All right, Viking fans, I watched the Monday Night Football game again, so you didn't have to, and here's why. Though you should not give up on the Vikings just yet in three, two, one. <laughs> Gather around, Skull Brothers and Sisters. This is Skull World, brought to you by Minnesota Sports Talk. I'm your host, Dave. You can follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook, at Skull World. I also go live on The Purple Code on Tuesday nights at 9.15 Eastern, 8.15 Central. I'll be there tonight. It's also broadcast on Twitter and on YouTube. So just make sure you go over and subscribe, like, and comment over there. Make sure you get... You ring the bell, and that way you get notified whenever we're doing a show. Also on the Purple Pod, Purple Pocket Podcast, um, a couple times a week. Make sure you hit subscribe, like, and comment over there, and ring the bell on all three of our shows. That way you do not miss anything. All right, let's talk about why I went back and watched the show or watched the game over again, and I did in its entirety, every play, because I want to remind myself of what happened and look into it a little bit more and you go away from that game and it's like you hear is the worst game we ever played no it's not i've seen us lose 41 nothing and 38 7 so hey in in big games and this is not the worst game we've ever played there's been bigger stinkers than this in a regular season and and in the playoffs there's this is by far not the worst game we ever played I did do a five by five where I said five ups, five downs, five positive things that happened, five negative things that happened. Our special teams was excellent. We flipped the field on them. We, we they did their job. We blocked a field goal, for heaven's sake. Our special teams were outstanding. We didn't get in any big returns or anything like that, but coverage and the punts. And the kickoffs were great. We didn't get a chance for any field goals because we were playing catch up. But if we, I had no doubt that we, if Joseph would have been able to make some kicks in that game, if we gave him the opportunity. And speaking of that, the opportunity could have uh, happened. If you remember, we, we were down 14, nothing and we went on a drive in this second quarter, second, first quarter ended seven, nothing. All right. So we're not out of it. They score 14, nothing the second quarter. You know, is it going to get out of hand? We went down and scored. Kirk Cousins was six for six. Uh, you know, threw a touchdown. Er Smith Jr.'s back. Sure, it was you know it was a well played. Uh, we seemed to have a really good grasp on goal line offense because that was the second time we ran a a play that got a guy walk in with with without being touched. So that's two weeks in a row that we've done that. Well, unfortunately, your defense, playing that shell defense, gives up another touchdown, 21-7. Now, is it getting out of hand? There's two minutes left. Well, at about under two minutes, we have a play where Ersmith Jr. is wide open, and it looks like he's going to catch it, and it somehow slips through his arm. And it honestly, it looked like it would have been a touchdown. He, he caught it in stride. Kirk Guzzin got smoked on that play. He threw it over two defenders. Er Smith Jr. was playing on the, he was the wide out. He was the widest receiver on the field. He And he it was actually two plays in a row where he was the widest player on the field. They, the safety flattened out for some reason. Instead of taking an angle on it, we, he dumped it right over him. Great throw in stride, drops it. Nope. Nope. And then what happens is we, it looks like the Eagles are, got not, they didn't call a timeout. They were going to run out the clock. We call a timeout. They make a big play. Now they got two timeouts. Get down to like our 20 some yard line. Kick a field goal. Now we're down 24 7. We get the ball the second half. Now let's erase, now let's rewind it. Irv Smith Jr. catches that ball, puts us at 21-14. If we hold them, 
We are now 21-14 with the ball coming out of half. And what happened? We drive down. We drive all the way down. And we throw a pick. And everybody agrees, and even including Justin Jefferson, that he should have flattened the route and crossed the receiver's face. The announcer said it. Justin Jefferson said it. Kirk Cousins said it. He was expecting him to flatten out. There's no way that you get in the end zone and and you don't and you just give up on your route. He was expecting him to cut in and cross the cornerback's face. Now my expectation was is that Slay probably breaks it up. Then we kick a and then we uh you know let's say the drive stalls we kick a field goal. Now we're down 21-17. But no, we throw an interception. We're down, so we're winded back. It doesn't happen that way. We end up, we're down 24-7 now. We could have been down 21-14. You know, if we, or 21-10, if we kick a field goal. That's a lot better. 20, or 24-10. Or 24-14 or 24-17 or who knows we scored a touchdown we're down 21-21 all those things were scenarios that could have happened they didn't though they wanted to it's almost like they wanted us to get back in that game they gave us the opportunity we didn't take advantage of it this was a game of lost opportunity we didn't we didn't execute we didn't execute we had a time management issue by calling that timeout, get a drop. We had six, we had five to seven drops in that game. Five to seven. Easy. Now, on some of those, we actually get, end up getting first downs after the drop. So they didn't hurt us as bad. But the Earth Smith Jr. one obviously hurt us really bad. The running game was non existent. That could have happened earlier. This is a team that gave up 184 yards. All those things could have happened. But there was that time period in three drives where where we marched down the field or could have or could have scored a touchdown. We marched down the field, scored a touchdown. We drop one that was probably a sure touchdown. And then we go down there and throw a pick in the red zone. So we got to the red zone. We didn't score. This is a team that scored in the red zone last year. Roughly the same offensive personnel as last year. Now, late later in the game, you may think, hey, um, Kirk Cousins is going to go into a shell. He's not going to want to throw another pick. Well, what did he do? He threw two more. The next, it, it came out that um, Kevin O'Connell said, still be aggressive, be aggressive, be aggressive. Kirk Cousins threw the second pick. It was a great play by the defender. It was a bad throw, though. He threw it He threw it behind Thielen and not high enough. He should have thrown it. Well, he, he could have thrown it the same height, but farther to the outside. He threw, it, he threw it late to Thielen. Now, obviously, Justin Jefferson had curled up and was open at a shorter point at a shorter pass, but it just looks like that cornerback baited Cousins, probably saw his eyes. He throws it to Thielen. He jumps back, catches the ball. It's a pick. If he didn't pick it, the other guy behind him did because the throw was behind. So that was a bad throw, maybe even a bad read. If he throws it to the outside, maybe Thielen toe taps it. But he didn't. He threw it behind him, and they were able to make a play. The uh, third interception. Now you think, hey, they're just going to play prevent. Um, he's going to get garbage time stats. We, well, they rushed six, like back to back. We did not have a hot read. There was no hot read on the play before, and the the next the next where he almost threw a pick on that play. Then he comes back and another rut. I think he t- brought six again, right in his face. He's throwing off his back foot on both plays. Doesn't get it far enough in the corner. 
underthrows it, Slay makes a play, but that was also an opportunity. The game is out of hand by then. We most likely don't come back, but hey, he still was throwing it, still trying to make something happen. He didn't go into a shell. We went four wide, five wide at some times, nobody in the backfield, and we still tried to score even as late with no time remaining on the clock. This team didn't give up. They need to make adjustments, like never have that defensive game plan again. You are better than that. This team is better than that. It just uh, it just gave them too much cushion. Now, the, all these things are completely fixable. The 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 part where I the the part where I am worried is that that rush de- or that run defense. We were getting manhandled on the run game. I looked back at the video. I watched it. They have a better offensive line all around than we do. And our offensive line has a weakness. It necessarily wasn't Bradbury in that game. I wasn't impressed with the way Ed Ingram played on the road. He regressed from last week. I thought he had a pretty good game the week before. A couple of bad pass protection plays. But other than that, he played pretty solid. I thought it was a little rough this week. He seemed a little bit lost. Now, Cleveland gave up a sack, but they were stunning. Uh, we only get we only had two sacks against us. We sacked them three times. Daniil Hunter had one, and then he hit him when he threw it. Like He was just a half step late. Would have had another one. You know, there there was some good things to come out of that defense. I didn't see Zadarius Smith at any time. Uh, Jordan Hicks had 13 solo tackles. I mean, Kendricks had more tackles than he had the week before. But that's because they weren't getting stuffed at the line. They were running that will on us again. They gave up like 4.8 yards per carry, so it's not crazy crazy like they had over six I think last week so hopefully we can make the adjustments there but hey Viking fans don't give up hope this was a stinker but if you go back and think about it they gave us an opportunity to get back in the game we drove down we dropped we uh, dropped the ball and then we also drove down and threw a pick but those were opportunities that we we were able to um, put us in a situation to come back, and we didn't take advantage of it. Now, take some solace in the fact that we didn't give up. There was opportunity there. Unfortunately, we didn't take advantage of it. Things will might. This is still a young, young nucleus of a team, as far as new to the offense, new to the defense. We'll figure things out. We did it in week one. We can do it again. That was a legitimate playoff team in Philly. Legitimate team, and they got a good quarterback, and they got weapons, and they got a good defense that didn't take their foot off the gas like they did against the uh, the Lions. Now we face the Lions. They're one and one. We're one and one. The Packers are one and one. The Chicago Bears are one and one. Let's let's win this home game, guys. Let's do it. Skull Vikings. Make sure you hit subscribe, like, and leave a comment. This is Skull World, brought to you by Minnesota Sports Talk. I'm your host, Dave. See you next time. Skull Vikes. Cue the music. Thank you, Viking fans, for listening. Make sure you catch my other episodes. Also, make sure you subscribe, like, and leave a comment below. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Skull Vikes.